Hi, this is Dennis with CyberCraft. Today we're going to talk about whether you should take your test in person or whether you should take it remotely. There's two different options and there's varying opinions on what you need to do or which one is better if there's advantages to each one. So we're going to discuss each of the pros and cons. So first off, it depends on which certification exam you're going to take. If you're taking a CompTIA exam, for example, you can schedule either an in-person test at a Pearson View Testing Center or a remote test. If you're taking an ISACA exam, the same thing, you can take it either remotely or in person. ISACA uses a different uh, proctoring service. And if you're taking an ISC2 test, you're going to have to take it in person most of the time. Uh, EC Council has their own proctoring service where you take the test remotely most of the time. So there are occasions where you can, ta can take it in person. Now, let me explain the benefits of each. First, let's start with in-person testing. Now, this is the most traditional form of testing. Uh, it's been around far longer than remote proctoring. And to do that, you would go to Pearson View for your certification body. This one, for example, is CompTIA. And you would schedule now. And then you would schedule your exam here. You'd fill out your information. And you'd go through. And you'd schedule your exam. Now, uh, it depends on whether you want to take that test in person or if you want to take it remote. I find it when I take my exams, I like to take them in person. Now, the reason I do that, first off, I have always taken my exams in person. So before online proctoring was even a thing, I was taking the test in person. Second, it puts me in the right frame of mind. I find that I get very focused when I go to the test center. And there's a couple tricks you can use when going to the test center that you can't do if you're doing a remote proctor test. Let me explain. So when you get to the test center, you enter the testing facility, you'll have like a waiting room where you'll check in, then you'll have a storage area, usually like a locker or a cubby where you can put your, inf you put your materials, your personal belongings. Now you're welcome to come in there with any study materials you want, your study guides. What I'll often do is I'll have the app up or the website up for cybercrafttraining.com and I'll just be doing practice questions on cybercrafttraining.com until it's time to do my test. I'm, I'm a big believer in cramming for an exam. I think it's very effective. Some people say don't cram. I think it's a good idea. So I have that right until they say, okay, we have a slot available or a seat available for you to take the test. Sometimes that's right away or sometimes I have to wait a little, long, little bit of time. So then they put everything in the cubby. They walk you into the examination center. And I always recommend if you're taking the test in person, what they're going to do is they're going to give you a dry erase pen and a dry erase board usually or a scrap piece of paper. Usually it's a dry erase board. What you can do before you click start exam is you sit down, make sure you're comfortable, get your mouse in a good position, and then write out a note section for yourself. Write out a cheat sheet, if you will, for your exam. So you write that out, that cheat sheet, and what that does, that cheat sheet is going to allow you to memorize or dump, brain dump everything that you've studied right before entering the test center. You, don't, you can't bring anything in with you, but you can do that brain dump. And now, every time you come across a topic on the exam, you're gonna know what that topic is. You're gonna have a note section written out for you. It's almost like you have, uh, it's almost like you're cheating on the exam, but you're not. You're just brain dumping before you click start test. And this does not take any of the time away from your actual exam. You do this before you click start exam. You can take as much time as you want doing that. There's no limit to that. So you take 20 minutes, take half an hour, just writing out that note section, just waiting, being ready uh, to then click start a test. Now, if you take half an hour or more, maybe the proctor might say something, but then, okay, oh, here, I'm ready to start the test. You can start the test. It, you're not uh, harming anybody by doing that. So once you have your note section, and what should you write on this note section? Well, I recommend you write uh, concepts that are probably gonna give you difficulty. So if we take a look at Security Plus, for example, uh, we might pick, okay, what's obfuscation? Or what are these different encryption algorithms? What are my ports and protocol uh, numbers? Or if you have trouble with acronyms, you go down to the bottom of the, the exam objectives and you'll have all of your acronyms. You can write down the acronyms that give you the most trouble. Now, if you ever come across these acronyms on the exam, you're gonna immediately know what they are. So if you have trouble remembering the different mobile device Deployment model, you can do, okay, COPE, and then, uh, you know, corporate, choose your own device, or uh, corporate owned, personally enabled, or, you know, the other one here, I gotta find it, but any of the deployment models, or you can do ports and protocols, you can do 
different, you know, DMARC, uh, any of the encryption algorithms are really good. Any of these are really good. So like a lot of these are really good encrypted file system. Any of the ones that start with E can be pretty, pretty easy to mix up with one another. So it's very helpful to put those all on your cheat sheet. Now that cheat sheet, and you can also put like nmap command syntax or command line syntax, whatever's giving you trouble. That's what you want to put on your cheat sheet and you have that for the rest of the test. It's also going to help you get focused for the exam because as you're sitting there for the exam, you're going to get used to what the exam room feels like. Maybe you're nervous taking a test. It's going to help you calm down. It's going to help you realize that you've prepared well for the exam if you're able to write out that cheat sheet. So take as much time as you want on that. Now, if you're taking the test at home, okay, it's a little different. Now, when you're at home, you have to basically be very still when you're scheduling your exam at home. You have to stay in the same frame like I am here where my face is centered from left to right, uh, top to bottom. You do not want to move your eyes or look around the room. Now, this can be difficult. You know, when I'm taking a test, I like to take a break or rest my eyes because you're staring at a screen for hours. So I like to look around sometimes or lean back in my chair. This is going to immediately get the attention of the proctor because the proctor is looking at you. They're looking at a bunch of other students. They're looking for any discrepancy. So if they see you start looking around, they might ask for you to take your web camera and do a 360 scan of the room. They're looking for note cards or ways that you may be cheating. Now, you may have absolutely no intention of cheating, and I do not advise you cheat on the exams. I'm just... If you do this type of motion, you may be accused of cheating. And I have had students who have been accused of cheating, even for doing things like leaning forward to look at the screen, to read the, the letters of the screen easier, or they maybe they had a hard time reading, or they were trying to rest their eyes and they looked up. It, I've even had uh, some instructors that have been told that their exam is canceled because of really simple things like this. And it's nothing that you would even think about doing consciously. You may be just, you know, subconsciously, okay, I've been at this exam for 45 minutes. I'm gonna look over here for a second. Now the proctor's saying, and it's gonna jolt you, you know, the proctor's gonna say, excuse me, candidate, you need to take your web camera and look around. Uh, one time I had a student who six times, you know, was caught just moving her eyes just up to the ceiling, just to give her eyes a break. She had dry eyes. And the proctor made her six times take the web camera and look around. It's a little extreme, but that does happen. So it's fine. Don't, I don't want to scare anybody off from doing this. Just make sure that you're centered, you stay in the right frame, and you don't move around or look around when you're taking the exam. Try and do that as minimal as possible. You also do not want to have any external noise. If you're in a noisy environment, I don't recommend taking your exam at home. Uh, noises or extraneous noise could cause you to be disqualified from the exam. Even if it's something like a dog barking or, you know, a child crying or anything like that. It could be very benign if it's construction noise. So if you live in an area or your uh, environment is not super quiet, I don't recommend taking the test at home or at your office. So, But if you can get a quiet environment and you're comfortable doing that, uh, then it's fine. And there is an advantage to taking the test at home. When you study, if you study at the same spot where you're planning to take your exam, that could put you in the right frame of mind when it comes time to take the exam. Because every time you sit down at that spot, okay, this is study time, I'm gonna study here, and that's it. And you use the same area every time, so then when it comes time to take your test, as you sit down, your brain recognizes that. Now you can also do some tricks at home. You know, uh, memory association is something I try to preach with my students. Whenever you're studying, have some sort of smell or taste or sound. The same type of thing when you're studying as when you take the test. So I like to listen to a certain type of music or music usually without lyrics while I'm studying. And then I'll try and play that in my head as I'm taking the test. It helps me recall the information. If you can do it with smell, you know, some of my students like to light a candle or have some incense. You could do that at home. So you light that same candle or do some incense. And uh, then you're studying. You have that memory association with that smell. So when it comes time to take your test, you light that same candle or you light incense or whatever, something that smells and uh, you're gonna have that same memory association. I'd recommend something that smells good as opposed to something that smells pretty bad. Uh, I, have <laughs> I had a student once who, who had a memory association with smell, but they picked something that smelled not so good, and I really questioned that decision, but I guess it worked for him because he did pass. 
Anyway, <laughs> so that's something you could do at home. Now, you can't play music, of course, and you can't be eating, uh, but it's something to keep in mind. So those are the two pros and cons, taking the test at home or taking it at the test center. The other thing, if you live in a remote area, it could be more convenient to take it uh, remotely. If you don't have a lot of testing centers around your area, if you live in an urban area where there's a lot of Pearson View testing centers, it might be convenient just to go to the testing center and just get everything done there. So that's really a trade-off between the two, and there's pros and cons to each. But if you ever need, if you take a Cybercraft test, we're going to help you pick a testing center in your location or schedule that test uh, remotely, your choice, and that goes for all of our exams. Well, I hope this was helpful. I hope this is a good video to break down this information for you. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. If you're looking for training, go to cybercrafttraining.com. We're happy to help get you certified. But thanks so much for watching the video, and have a great day.